All right, let's say hello now to Chris Weidman. Of course, we saw him uh, just a couple of weekends ago in Jacksonville. Unfortunate turn of events. Can't thank him enough for doing this interview. Uh, don't need a long introduction. We all know what happened. And he has provided really great updates on his social media. So kudos to Chris for that. But first off, Chris, uh, I guess the question that you've probably been asked a thousand times since that fight in Jacksonville, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling okay. You know, I'm, uh, I mean, I guess uh, I've been through different cycles of, you know, of thoughts with this. It, it, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be at all. Hang on one second. So I initially was super optimistic because I was after surgery. I just figured it was going to be three, you know, maybe three, four days worth of pain. Um, and then I'd be kind of back into it. You know, I've had 23 surgeries, so it's not like it's my first rodeo going through a surgery. This is my 24th surgery actually. Um, but I didn't realize how different this was, um, when compared to every other surgery I, I had, this was a serious traumatic thing that happened to my leg. And, um, the, the recovery is going to be way longer and, and harder than I've ever experienced. And so I, I had to go through that time. I had to go through a tough time. I want, I went through a tough time about the four or five day mark post surgery because it started going the other way. You know, it started becoming more painful as opposed to getting better. Um, and it was just so excruciating, man, like to get, to just get up for me to crutch my way to the bathroom, I would talk myself into it. Like, I just have to amp myself up and like mentally prepare myself to be mentally tough just to get to the bathroom because the amount of pain that that created when I got up from having my leg up above my heart to where I was putting that leg down, not actually putting weight on it, but just getting on crutches and going to the bathroom was so bad, man. The pooling of blood in my shin and my foot was just so terrible. Um, it went, I went from actually feeling pretty good with the anesthesia the first few days, you know, and as, as long as I wasn't getting up to go to the bathroom to where I had, I was literally sleeping all day long. Um, only time I was moving really was to go to the bathroom. Uh, and those moments were just terrible. Um, literally like crying and pain. <laughs> and I didn't, I just didn't expect that. I always felt like I was pretty good with pain. Um, and a lot of negative thoughts start creeping into my head because I've had some things gone wrong before. And even in the public eye, but I don't think a lot of people even realize what went down. So when I fought Kelvin Gaslam, so during this crazy time period where I'm trying to, you know, get through the pain and I'm just sleeping all day, I did speak to the doctor and I started asking him some questions, some hard questions, because things didn't seem right to me. And uh, <clears throat> so when I fought Kelvin Gaslam, I hit him with like a left hook when he was coming in a check left hook, and I won that fight. But after that fight, I um, I was out for over a year uh, because I broke my thumb on his head and then I tore a ligament. So they went in and fixed the ligament like pretty much a few days after the fight. Um, and they thought the surgery went well. Uh, but about eight weeks to 10 weeks later, they ended up realizing that the bone, because it was such a concussive hit that I hit him with Mason quiet. It was such a concussive hit. There's Murray be sneaking through a Colton. <laughs> uh, it was such a concussive hit that I hit him with the blood supply to the bone never came back. You just have to be quiet. Can you assume me? This What's is Colton. Up, What's up, Colton? You just got oh. finished with the school. I love okay. the shirt. He said he loves the shirt. He doesn't know. He doesn't know he's in P R E K. So he doesn't like to hear that, okay. but uh, <laughs> he goes pre-K. <laughs> um, don't touch that. Um, <clears throat> so the blood, the blood supply to the bone never came back. So my bone was just dying. So there was nothing they could do at that point. They had to go in and take out everything they did with surgery, take out that bone that was dying and they didn't have the blood supply in it anymore and take my hip bone out, put it in there, fuse the joint. And that's what I have here. That's why my thumb only really moves like this um, because they fused this whole joint down here how with a, uh, with a plate and uh, my hip bone. That? Hang how on. Do you do that? So obviously now this was a serious concussive blow that I just hit. Um, that I hit your right hole with and my leg shattered in two. And so when I started feeling this pain, I remember feeling a crazy pain when I was having my hand, when I was recovering my hand surgery and it wasn't going well. 
And so I was asking the doctor, like, what if the, is there a chance that blood supply doesn't come back to the bone? Like, and then what happens? And he actually said, yeah, there's uh, it actually, unfortunately, the tibia bone has probably, the, it has the lowest percentage of taking and healing uh, when you compare it to other bones. So that's not a good thing, uh, but it's still a low percentage, which is, it's about 5% that it doesn't take. But I'm thinking, all right, if it already happened to me once in my hand, am I even more of a candidate of my blood not coming back to a bone? And there's just no, there's no telling, which honestly, that would mean what he straight up told me that's amp- most people elect to do amputation and then, you know, prosthetics and all that stuff. So, you know, <clears throat> I do kind of always think, <laughs> always kind of think of worst case scenarios, even when I was face down on that, on that canvas. And um, I was trying to search for silver linings and, I, I would, I, when they were trying to feel my pulse in my foot, I knew what that meant. I remember it all. And, um, I, 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 I was thinking about, you know, well, all right, let's, I guess, you know, prosthetics have gone a long way if they have to amputate it, you know, and then I'm going to have to deal with it. And obviously, you know, I was, I was trying to make a silver line even with that. So I'm prepared for anything. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. But I'm just telling you, like some of the thoughts that are going through my mind, that's that was one negative thing. And one of the things I spoke to the doctor about, and I'm still a little concerned about. Um, the other thing is that my foot still hasn't had complete feeling come back yet. So the bottom of my foot and some of the toes are still like almost like you fell like your foot fell asleep. Um, and there's no telling with nerves how long they take to come back or if they ever come back. So. I've had my fair share of nerve damage, you know, and, and nerves that kind of went bad. You know, I've had two neck surgeries, so I've had, you know, weakness and, and numb feeling and tingling and all that stuff. Uh, I've dealt with that for a long time. And then when they took my hip bone out, I've had two surgeries where they took my hip bone out and put it into my hands. And the first one, the feeling never came back to my hip. They said it was going to come back, don't worry. And then I still have numbness for like in a large majority of my hip area. Uh, my hand still has numbness, you know, by the scar. Um, so sometimes I, I just know, you know, if it ever comes back, you know, it may never come back, you know. So that's not a good thing because uh, I think I was talking to my surgeon or another doctor. I've been on, I can't even tell you, this last week has been a blur with pain medication and pain and stuff. But um, I was talking to somebody and they were saying that <clears throat> for athletes, like the proprioceptors in your foot, uh, are super valuable, obviously. And so like, I need to get that full, I need to get that feeling back in my foot. Like I could move my toes. I could feel that they're there. They're just not, um, as they're not normal, you know, it's just, they're still like sleeping or whatever. So I'm hoping that goes back. And, uh, I start physical therapy today <clears throat> to just switch it over to a completely different subject. But yeah, I start, I start today. And, and the goal is to literally just get into the car get to the physical therapy office. And if I just have, if I'm able to just put my leg up, that is uh, it, like, just put it up and ice it while I'm there. They just want to get me into that environment. They want to get me out of my house and uh, kind of deal with that excruciating pain of, you know, standing up and, you know, crutching and having the blood flow. So I'm not looking forward to that. <clears throat> um, but I just know, you know, I gotta, I gotta start doing it. So. So obviously a, a lot there and a lot of things I'm, I'm that, was a, uh, that was a rant. That was, that no, was a but rant. that's, I, I appreciate apologize. it. No, no, not at all. Is it possible? So there's two things that I guess you're dealing with now, the physical pain and the mental pain, right? Is it possible that because you're allowing your brain to go in a million different directions, you're on the couch, you're in bed, you're not doing much, right? You're usually a guy who's very active is, is in a weird way, the mental pain greater than the physical pain or not quite yet. Uh, you know, I don't let my, I don't really let myself really dwell on that too much. Like I'm, when I, when I, when you first asked that question, like the first thing that popped in my head was like the frustration. I'm getting emotional. I don't know why. Uh, I, <laughs> I just, it's just, it's just very frustrating. <sighs> oh, I'm cramping. Um, I was just in a, I was in a very good spot physically, mentally, spiritually. I had some big goals I was ready to accomplish and I cannot believe this happened to me. 
you you were talking about the thoughts that were going through your mind like in mm. the cage you remember all that vividly because i would think that yeah. that would be a blur no i actually remember that very vividly um wow. yeah so the first thing i remember is i don't remember stepping back i didn't think i actually stepped back and my leg do the same thing and it's silva did where it completely you know snapped and um, but I re- all I remember is hitting him with the shot. And the first thing that went through my mind was that was a super hard leg kick. And, like, he's not taking more than one or two of those. Like, that had to have hurt him. Then secondly, I looked up at his eyes, and I saw him have, like, almost like a poker face on. I'm like, oh, bro, you, there's no more. There's no more. You can't take any more of those. I know. That had to have hurt. And then apparently I stepped back, and that's – must have been where I looked down and I got the visual of my leg flopping around. Um, I don't remember stepping down, but I just remember seeing my leg, you know, rubbery. And knowing what just happened, I hit the floor. I told Uriah Hall, I'm good. Like, don't hit me. Yeah. <laughs> the second here, I put my head down and I just was, I just took, the, took a bunch of moments and I just was, uh, um, First, I cannot believe that was my leg. There's no way that was my leg. Like, what the hell? Um, and then, then I was like, okay, I'm dealing with some severe pain right now. I need to just calm down and just relax. And so I put my head down. I was relaxed. And, and then the chaos was beginning to mount around me um, with the doctors and Herb Dean and all that and i'm you know they're right away they're trying to like turn me over i could hear them you know discussing between them and almost the uncertainty of the situation and the shock even on them uh but i was still staying calm i wasn't making noises and i was putting my head down and herb dean at one point he looks he's like you know i guess probably looking down on me my head was down but and he, he starts yelling out to them he's out he's unconscious he's unconscious and i'm like no i'm not i'm just trying to stay calm and I put my head back down. Uh, and then then next thing I know, they want to move me, you know, put it into this this brace or splint. Uh, and I was just uh, being asking them what they're trying to do and let's work together here. Like, let's not like, you know, I, I you decide because I knew my leg was snapped in half. And I understand if someone has my foot and someone has my knee and you go in different directions, my, right. they're not going to be working well together. So I was just like, let me know what you're going to do. Let's do it together please and i was like trying to almost direct the situation and uh and then the pain really started hitting and then it went from me you know being super calm not talking at all to like singing i was humming and uh praying and that was that was crazy you what were you singing (laughs) <laughs> I remember I, I was singing a bunch of things. I was, anything to keep my mind off of it. I wanted to hear. I didn't want to hear what they were saying anymore because uh-huh. it was scary. The things they were saying, you know, when they start talking about the pulse in my foot and you, you don't, you can't hear them say if they hear it or not. And, you know, I was just started making noise in my own head. So I didn't hear them. I was covering my ears. I know <laughs> at least in the hospital, I remember covering my ears a lot and just yelling and making noises. So I couldn't hear them any, like say anything. And it was also a way for me to deal with the pain that was going on. Um, I remember seeing, I remember at one point singing, uh, Jesus loves me. Yes, he does. <laughs> so I started, I went back to like my elementary religion, religion classes. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what else I was singing exactly, but I was just humming and making noises. Um, and then when I got into the back, I was, you know, Screaming for my wife, making sure, you know, she was back there with me. They were, like, saying they were going to have to leave without her. They, I remember they had won the boy in the ambulance. And I'm like, where is Marie? And they couldn't find her. And they ended up finding her. She got on the ambulance. They were like, we're leaving without her. I'm like, you are not leaving without her. I will jump out of this ambulance. <laughs> uh, it was that. And then the other thing, literally, probably, I don't know, 30 seconds into me be- being injured. When can you guys put me out? Get me get me pain medication immediately and they couldn't get me any pain medication until i was on the ambulance so on the ambulance i'm like put the you know get me the iv put the pain medication in me right now please 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 i was just begging to be not deal with this type of pain um i can't even describe that pain man it was uh it was something i'll never be able to really articulate it was just so it was brutal man from the you could feel the bones 
you know, rubbing it against each other, especially, you know, if they were one guy's picking up on my heel and not realizing my leg is snapped and now the tibia and fibula are bumping into each other. And who knows, my, obviously there was bone hanging out my calf too. I don't know what was going on. Um, I was keeping my eyes closed, but it was, the pain was terrible. Colton, you cannot be making tiger noises here. I'm assuming um, you said 24 surgeries now, unlike anything, not even close to anything you've ever yeah, felt, right? I mean, listen, I've had 10 knee surgeries, three elbow surgeries, two neck surgeries, three hand surgeries, eye surgery. You know, um, I don't, I've had, I've had pretty much everything you could possibly have. Um, this was, this is still to this day. I don't know what, how my, how many days I'm out from surgery, maybe nine, uh, nothing like I've ever felt before, but I was happy to hear this is to be expected. There's right. been people who reached out to me on Instagram who've gone through some of the things that, because I was paranoid about how long this pain is. Then I started making me worry about like, you know, the blood supply and everything. It's, it's expected to be this terrible. It's almost like, you know, it's almost like my leg got blown up, you know, it was super traumatic. And the force that you come, I came in on that kick on, uh, with is, uh, is now the pain that I'm feeling. Um, I think, you know, the doctor was explaining it was, it's that shot, the amount of power and, you know, the velocity that it happened, like basically wrapped around a pole, kicked as hard, you know, I kicked as hard as I can completely fresh. And uh, it's that, it's that explosive, you know, nature of the kick that I'm feeling now. And uh, it's obviously like nothing I've ever felt before. You know, for those watching it at home, shocking obviously very rare thing to see but then of course as i'm sure you know by now the the connection to anderson silva is just mind-blowing right like the fact that it happened with you being the opponent now it happens to you do you recall at what point you were like i can't believe the same thing just happened to me i think honestly when i was face down for wow. like when i was face down i think that immediately popped in my head like is this a bad dream like how is that possible it all process, you know, kind of like I was a normal person just looking from outside and from the outside looking in like, hey, bro. All right. So I was a part of Innocent Silva. This happened to Innocent Silva. And this happens to me. Like, how the hell does this happen? What is what is God telling me right now? Like, there has there has to be a silver lining here, you know. And that was the other thing I was really, you know, focused on when I, when I hit the deck is there has to be a reason for this. There has to be a, a, a like – Something good has to come out of this because otherwise I just don't understand why this is happening to me. Um, like what's the chances, you know, and you know, you watch guys kick all night long and they might've kicked on that same exact spot with similar effort and, you know, legs aren't snapping. Like what's, why did that happen to me? I mean, there's three light breaks in the history of the UFC and I'm a part of two of them. Mm. Do I get something for that? You know, <laughs> like, do I get anything for that? Um, yeah. So. Do you, have you asked your doctors? I don't know if this is even something they could answer. You know, I've, I've heard people say like, Oh, maybe there were micro fractures, which led to this, or is it just like a freak thing? I saw Conor this? McGregor came out and said something about micro fractures. I could tell you, I had no, nothing wrong with my shin okay. at all going into this fight. Never had pain in my shin while kicking. Um, I, I, you know, a bunch of, Fighters, obviously, I know like, their shins are all beat up and, you know, their calves are beat up or whatever. And um, I kick very hard. I know that. Any, but it might not be the prettiest, but when I kick, it's super every, – everyone who's ever sparred me or anything is like, bro, you got to start kicking more in your fights and stuff. And I'm like, I know, I know. Um, but I know I know I kick hard, um, but I've never had any issues with, with, my, with my shins. Um, I didn't even, yeah, I don't, I, I just, it doesn't make sense. You know, did I not have enough, enough calcium or something? I, I, I've been, I have all my vitamins. I eat healthy. I, I was never in better shape than I was going into this fight than I've ever been. Like I, I was in such good shape. I did not stop working out since, some since uh, September, a lot of weightlifting, which I never did, which I know makes your bones stronger. It was, uh, it's mind boggling to me. It, to me, it, 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 there's a silver lining somewhere, and it's going to take some time to, f to find it and see it play out. But I feel like there's going to be some good that comes out of this. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm praying and I'm optimistic. I'll be back out there sooner than anybody thinks. And 
hopefully I could inspire people who who are going through tough times and they able to uh, push through and accomplish things that nobody else thinks they, they could. So right now that's the mindset. So when you get to the hospital, um, how soon after do you have the surgery and what exactly was the surgery? I saw that they put a, a metal rod in your leg, correct? Yes. Yeah. So I get to the hospital and right away, I'm, I mean, that must have been annoying as hell, but I was crying. I'll be, every doctor who came by me, I'm like grabbing their hand because they didn't let family and anybody around me for a large majority of it because they put first they they took me and they put me in the back and they were going to try to set my leg. So take it out of the skin and the calf muscle bring it back in and set it, clean it up and everything, you know? So the infection is less worrisome and they were going to do it while I'm awake. And I was just like, please put me to sleep, please put me to sleep. But they said they couldn't do it. And they eventually put me into a twilight sleep, which I, and I remember kind of waking up during it, um, which is funny, but um, they, uh, I just wanted them to put me to sleep. And like I said, I was, there was no one back there. Um, other than like doctors and stuff, I was holding their hands and, you know, putting it on my face. I was in so much pain, man, so much pain. And they had gave me morphine and uh, was it dormitol, I think is the other one. Uh, they gave me ketamine. They were giving me everything. I just kept asking for more. I'm like, please, please, anything. Just like put me to sleep. I just, when do I get to go to surgery? And they were talking about 7 a.m. the next day. I'm like, yo, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Please just put me to sleep. I cannot deal with this all night long. Uh, so they put me, they put me into a twilight sleep. They put it back and they it put it back, uh, you know, I guess made it a little bit better of a position for it to be with, to, to be able to maintain overnight. And I had to deal with the pain until seven in the morning or seven 30 until they finally put me into surgery. Uh, during that time I had visitors who came in once they stabilized it. Uh, you know, Dana White came, which is, which is awesome. I really appreciated that. Uh, Reed Harris came out and I was just such a, like, everyone's saying how tough I am and all that. <laughs> I was crying. I'm holding their hands. You know, I was just, I was in a very terrible spot. Not because I, I was, I don't even think I was emotional for any other reason than the pain I was going through was just, uh, something I've never experienced. And I had to deal, and I knew I had to deal with it all throughout the night. It was just freaking a nightmare. Um, yeah, so Reed Harris, Dana, my whole, you know, my bunch of my, my, my obviously my mom and dad, my wife, my 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 family, my cousins. Uh, uh, so I had a lot of support, but it was just really rough. I didn't want anybody to leave me because <laughs> I needed someone's hand to hold, you know. Um, and then uh, surgery wise which obviously I couldn't wait for it just because I knew they were going to get to put me to sleep. And I just wanted to be not, I wanted to be pain-free. Um, they went in and they go, so they go through it. I, I could show you now you want to see the, like the scars and stuff, right? Sure. <laughs> okay. So this scar right here, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So this big one up top, this is where they opened me up and they took the, the titanium rod and they put it through the knee joint into the, uh, the center of the tibia bone here. Uh -huh. and the, I, this is all what they, they explained this to me, but the tibia bone and just like all bones, you have the bone marrow. So it's a little softer on, in the middle. And they, I believe they hammered, hammered it through the center of the tibia bone all the way from the top of the knee through the knee joint, which is why my knee's been killing me all the way down to the, the ankle. Okay. So I got a titanium rod that they put in the middle of that bone and where the fracture was they lined it up i guess perfectly was the hope and uh hammered it through the center of both bones and now that bone is one straight line um now it has to take to the titanium and also take to the bone itself and heal um the other bone that snapped in half was the fibula that's like the bone in the back the smaller one that they actually just left completely broken and they want that to heal on their own. Usually they don't touch the fibula. Um, it's not as weight bearing. I don't think it's, it may not be weight bearing at all. Um, which is kind of crazy because anytime I move my leg, if I go to pick up my leg right now, the, I feel the clicking and the movement of the fibula just moving in there. It's not super painful. And they told me it was going to happen. So it's not like a shock, but when I move it, or when I move my leg around, I can feel the, the fibula just like, you know, clicking around in there moving. And at some point, it, the hope is that it finds itself and heals.
and that you know it will um yeah so then uh these these other portal scars here yeah. are do you see that yep yep so that's where they must have went in there with tools and helped guide that 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 uh titanium rod down that bone um and then the other issue that they had to deal with was the uh let me see if i can get this oh my. this is where yeah this is where the uh the bone came crashing through my my calf muscle and then through the skin uh i when i step back mm -hmm. so that's uh the other thing and so just to be clear because you alluded to this you want to fight again, right? This is your plan. This is your goal. Because usually you go through something traumatic. You don't want to experience whatever led to that trauma. But it sounds to me like this is what you want, right? Man, I just, it's just so frustrating. I don't know how much work it's going to take. Um, but yeah, this is what I want, man. I just, I know, I just know how good I am and I want to be able to prove it. And I don't have many more years left of being able to do that. And if I'm able to get my, my my body never felt so good before this fight, I just can't believe this happened. It just sucks. Um, I really was excited to show the world, you know, how good I am, be able to, you know, put it out there. But um, this happened. So I just I just want an opportunity to go out there and uh, do what I'm, I know I'm capable of while I still can. And so if, if I can get my body back to where I feel like I'm that guy again, uh, I 100% want to fight. I want to be able to demonstrate, you know, the talents I have and, uh, you know, put on a show and then also be able to, you know, inspire other people. Like coming back from this is uh, not going to be easy. And uh, there's going to be, it's way, way tougher of a recovery already in the first 10 days than I, you know, than I could ever have imagined. So it's going to be a long, long road. Now, this is the first time. I mean, I'm not able to walk. You know, I'm not going to be able to walk for I think two months. You know, put weight on it and stuff. So I am completely just bedridden. You know, I lay down with my leg up. I can't get around. You know, it's 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 brutal. So I'm relying on you know my wife, my my family, to do everything for me. So it's it's cra it's a crazy uh, crazy thing. I've never never did this before. What do you do to pass the time? So, like I said, yesterday was the first day, really, where I, I could do what I wanted to do. I, it wasn't so painful, um, and I was able to stay off the drugs to where I could play a video game. And so mm -hmm. I was playing video games. I played Call of Duty all day, all yesterday. And I never, I, I never really – I haven't been able to play in a while. Um, so it's good to get on there and just start dominating people, you know, in some Call of Duty. Um, but yeah, so yes, it was the first day. Every other day, it's been you know I would love to do that, but, and everyone's asking me, oh yo, you guys start gaming and whatever, and I'm just like, bro, I can't. I'm in so much pain, and uh, I'm sleeping or I'm sleeping and going to the bathroom. And that's it. Like literally, I was sleep oh, for I don't know three four days. I was just sleeping all day long and, and sleeping all night. So I was getting good sleep, but uh, the pain was pretty vicious realistically what do they say like in terms of you stepping foot in the cage and competing again did they even get do they even give you a timeline not even there yet no. not even there yet i mean so like today is the first time i'm going to be seeing a physical therapist um i haven't seen the the, the doctor who's going to be um, who i'm going to be working with for this whole recovery you know my stitches are still in you know so mm -hmm. they're gonna to have to look at the their, their the number one their number one concerns is uh infection so they want to check out the wounds and, um, uh, and, and blood clots is the other thing I'm taking tons of, uh, well, the one medicine I had to be super consistent on, I think for 40 days is blood thinners because I guess when the bones start jetting everywhere, there, there's a concern of, you know, blood clots and then eventually, you know, uh, you know, coming up to the heart or something like that. So I want blood thinners, um, you know? Yeah. So. Are you familiar with the story of Alex Smith? I know Alex Smith, but not really his, his story. About his leg injury and everything he's been through. And I'm just wondering if uh, people have reached out to you, athletes, 
who have been through, I mean, obviously it's not the most common injury, but anyone who's inspired you or anyone you've been now reading about and, and have said or watched videos. I mean, the Alex Smith story is an incredible one, what he's been able to go through and come back to the NFL. Um, have you been able to draw inspiration from any one or two people, any stories? <sighs> Not yet, just because, I, like I said, I've been in so much pain. I haven't had time. I haven't looked at videos. I'm not watching anything. Okay. The first couple of days, I actually was probably – that's where I was the best. I was, you know, I'm you know starting a YouTube channel, and I was, you know, having my buddy Seki come over to interview me and all that. And, uh, then that got shut down for a while. <laughs> I was like, I can't be around anybody. I'm dead. Um, I haven't had time to look at it anything to inspire me or encourage me or I, I honestly even like direct messages I may look at them um go through them a little bit just it's nice to see how much love and love and uh support I'm getting during this time that's definitely something I want to address like I am so thankful um I've never been so thankful uh for all the fans that are out there usually you know you see haters and it kind of mm -hmm. makes it not want to even look um I have not seen anything negative like oh, people are really coming out and uh letting me know how much they they're uh supporting me and they're praying for me and they're really you know you know thinking about me and wanting me to get better and everyone just feels terrible for me um it's it's really nice and a lot of people have reached out with you know encouraging stories but i just haven't been able to really process it all uh just because i like you know from drugs to severe, you know, pain and just sleeping and just not really being in this world per se. It does seem though that you are uh, taking it upon yourself to really update people. Like, you know, you use social media, but I feel like you've used it a little more over the past nine or so days. Is this something that you want to do? Or do you think now you just said like your friend was interviewing you and you had to start like, do you think that maybe that gets to be a lot as well? No, no, I plan on, I really do plan on documenting this um, as thoroughly as possible. Um, and usually I'm not that guy. I'm, I honestly, I like, I don't know. I just don't like putting myself out there that much. I don't like, you know, thinking I'm better than anybody and like, oh, look at me doing this. Look at me doing that. I just always kind of been a thing that has held me back in, I think, social media world. Um, I think it's stupid. I should be, but I just, just, I don't know, just natural habit. Uh, but with this the amount of like love and support I've got and the prayers, um, I want to really keep people updated as best as possible. So I did start a YouTube channel and I'm going to stay consistent with it. And I'm going to put as like, you know, I've been doing testimonials, you know, throughout the day, you know, from when I'm in the worst of pain, um, you know, from my mom rubbing my feet because, you know, we're trying to get the feeling back. You know, with lotion and, you know, going from they have I have like this special potty <laughs> that sits over the toilet that's taller. But then you got to use the same one for the shower. So I got to wait for someone, you know, you know, when you got to use the bathroom, you sit on that thing. So your knee isn't as flexed or bent. Um, and then you got to that's where I have to sit when I shower. I can't obviously stand. Uh, and that's just such a you know, I want to shower. But man, is that brutal? Just even sitting down with your leg down with the with the blood, um, but yeah, I just want to. I, I I'm, I'm documenting everything, and um, I'm you know started the YouTube channel, and I just want to keep people in the loop as much as possible. Uh, I will let you go. Uh, the response, you know, to see what Uriah said about you afterwards, to see what Anderson Silva said, to see all the fighters showing you love has really been uh, an incredible thing to see. And, and uh, I expect nothing less. Uh, the last thing I just wanted to ask you was, you know, cause I saw on Friday, your kids were at the fight or at least at the weigh-ins. What was their reaction when they saw you and, and how, you know, and I promise I'm not trying to make you cry here, Chris, but you know, I see, <laughs> I see a lot of you and I see myself and you, you have three kids. I just like, that was the first thing that I thought of what was, you know, how are your kids going to, react to this so i was just wondering how that went uh i don't know <laughs> I if, hate you, you. If, if, if you don't want to no. hey, listen i'm getting no, emotional was, man because you know yeah. chris i have to say man i you know how much i i, I love you man and uh, it's very hard for me to see you like this so and i'm not supposed to say that as a journalist so i you know if you don't want to answer it it's okay yeah mm. i get it no, I, I don't know how to answer it. <laughs> uh, it 
No, it's very hard. Um, I'm trying to get it out. Um, Colton's completely fine. <laughs> he's he's rolling around with army guys right now and playing with a tiger. Uh, but my daughter, who's eleven, and uh, my son, who's eight, definitely a little tougher. Um. Um, oh, here he is. Look, yeah, you know, they all care. Um, yeah, but my uh, my son's class, they did like a whole they came out with like a whole sign, you know, saying for me to feel better. All the kids signed it. Um, uh, you know, <clears throat> I don't know, was it the day after Marivy when CJ and them came to the hospital? The day of. Oh yeah, so the day at, the day of the surgery, um, I wanted my I wanted my kids there. You know, I was like, you know, I know uh, they heard what happened. They're super upset. Um, but I think because of COVID restrictions, they weren't letting in anybody on their six teams. But. <laughs> I made sure that I was just like, you know, my kids need to be up here. And I think because of the traumatic event and the whole world seen it, the nurses and everybody, everyone really, it's amazing how many people seen this fight or someone they know seen it and they have heard about it because all the nurses kind of knew what happened, whether their husbands were watching it or whatnot. And so I got my kids up there and it was, uh, it was good, you know, just to let them know I was I was okay. You're an I inspiration. I, I, man. Can't, I can't really can't no, get much more out. I, I totally I'm understand. Gonna start, I'm gonna start sobbing. What a story! Uh, what a story your career has been, from living in your parents' basement to to Hurricane Sandy and 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 the knockouts against uh, the likes of Anderson Silva and Vitor Belfort and Leona Machida and and everything that you've accomplished. Uh, I'd like to think that someone up above puts certain people in these situations and uh, you have been an inspiration your entire career and you will now be one for many other people who are going through hard things and your return to the UFC, to the octagon, whatever you choose to do is going to be an incredible story. So, uh, you know, I wish you nothing but the best. I know that you'll get through this. You're as tough as they come mentally and and spiritually. So uh, I know it's going to be tough, but you know, there's millions, literally millions of people who are pulling for you and sending you good vibes. So I think that you'll be able to overcome it, especially with your family there in uh, South Carolina. So I won't take up more of your time, Chris. Thank you for doing this. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best. And I wish you a very, very speedy recovery. Thank you, Ariel. I <laughs> I can't really talk right now without crying. So I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm going to shut up. Um, thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.